Today's topic is shared decision-making made simple. There's been a tremendous evolution in physician-patient communication over the last several years. We've moved from a paternalistic model where we essentially tell patients what's best for them and expect them to do it, to now really coming into a partnership with patients to open a two-way dialogue so that we can arrive at what is best for the patient, not just based on our evidence or experience, but indeed based on the patient preferences. This concept is really embodied in the model of shared decision-making, where two parties come together, looking at the best evidence that we have and the experience that we have, but also based on the patient's preferences and coming to a consensus about what is the best therapy. I'm very delighted today to share uh, this video with good friends and marvelous people. Uh, we have uh, Robin Tui, who's the Vice President of Patient Support here at the International Myeloma Foundation, and her husband, Michael Tui, who is a 23-year survivor with multiple myeloma. Michael, I shared a couple of minutes ago just the concept of shared decision-making, this partnership, as, you, as it were, between a physician and a patient. You tell me, what is it really in real life? For us, it's really important to establish, we establish a relationship with our local HEMOC as well as our myeloma specialist. Being comfortable in conversations with them makes it easier when there's challenging decisions that have to be made. While we respect our doctors and all the advice they give us, it's nice to have our voice at the table. I would say it's more than nice to have the voice at the table. I would say it's critical that your voice be at the table and that we listen not only be speaking as physicians. And, and I, I'm very glad to hear that you believe that relationship is so important to that, uh, so that as we go forward, we can recognize the value of that relationship and foster it. Uh, well, Robin, very often, it really isn't just a conversation between a physician and their patient or the healthcare team and their patient. The care partner is very much involved. So help us understand why is the shared decision model that we're discussing today so important to the care partner as well? That's a really important question. So while Michael has developed this wonderful relationship with both our local HEMONC and our myeloma specialist, I see him day to day. I see the impact that the disease as well as the various treatments have taken on his quality of life. And I wanna make sure that the doctor understands that. So when we're driving down to our appointment, we have a conversation in the car. So what has it been like since our last appointment with the doctor? What are the questions we wanna ask? What are the goals? When we leave the office, we wanna go home feeling good about this and clear about what the next instruction may be. And then we're ready for that conversation and as a follow-up, when we go home, we always talk again about what did you hear? What did I hear? We wanna make sure that we're very clear so that you can adhere to whatever it is. We understand what the side effects are and how to manage them and what to do about those side effects. That's fantastic. So really, you become an additional voice at the table and additional ears at the table to give us as the healthcare team a greater picture of what's happening with Michael, but also an opportunity to implement the plan and the decision that we've come to together. Well, Michael, before we wrap up, I, I wanna give you a last voice here. Uh, and what kind of advice would you give to individuals? We have patients listening in and they're just beginning to navigate this journey. Uh, what would you want them to know about shared decision-making and the conversations they have with their healthcare team? Sure, I think education is very important. We did a great deal of reading my, about myeloma and the IMF is a wonderful resource. Going to RCWs, patient family seminars, myeloma.org is a fantastic website to get information. But the one thing we can recommend to patients, there's a lot to take in. Don't be overwhelmed by all the information. Go at your own pace and learn what you can so you can talk the talk with your doctor. That's fantastic advice. You know, as a provider, I love to see when patients have taken time and we can work through it with them, but gaining that education really empowers the patient for that uh, shared decision making. So as we think as healthcare professionals of shared decision making, sometimes we've been hesitant because we think, oh, it's gonna take a little bit too much time. 
And in fact, as I often say, time communicating is time saved. We know that this model results in better outcomes for our patients. They're more likely to be satisfied. They're more likely to adhere to therapy. And indeed, they have better outcomes, even in survival and oncology with this shared decision-making model.